Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We're here with Stephen Campbell, the Brain Whisperer. Hey, you're Steve. Good. How are you? Good to see you again. It's always so good to see you. I miss Steve. you because I only see you about once a month or so, and it's such a delight to see you again. Great. Steve, it's always our pleasure. Hey, um, Steve, we were talking about the brain and how it works and our self-images. And I was thinking uh, the other day that it's really important uh, our, that our friends are positive, that mm -hmm. our friends share with us the truth when they tell yeah. it. Because if I'm going to develop my own self-image, I need to know the truth about yeah. me, yeah. how other people see me. Yeah. So I can develop my self-image mm -hmm. for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me friendship is really important. Oh, I need to be my own best friend. Bingo. That's right. What is a what are the characteristics of a good friendship? I just have four. There's 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 dozens of them if you go to psychology classes. But the ones that I think are the most important is number one, I'm not a friend is non judgmental. They don't judge you for the mistakes that you've made. Number two, they're really, really good listeners. They really listen. And number three, they're supportive in both the good times and the bad times. And number four, they're very forgiving. Now, these are outside friends. But what I want to talk about is using those virtues on yourself. Being non judgmental, listening to when you're talking to yourself because we're talking to ourselves all day long, being supportive of yourself when you do really good things and when you mess up, which you're going to, and forgiving yourself a lot. And all of those characteristics involve feelings. So what I want to talk about today are not necessarily how we think, but how we feel. And this comes out of a book which was printed back in 1961 called The Guide to Rational Living by Dr. Albert Ellis. What he discovered and what has since been validated by decades of research all over the world is that our feelings about ourselves don't necessarily come from how we were raised or events in our lives or the pandemic or the mistakes or the successes. Do you know where they come from, John and Art? They come from our beliefs about how we were raised and our beliefs about the pandemic and our successes and our failures. So let me illustrate, and I've talked about this before, but it's such a good story. Let's imagine, John, that I show up at your front door with a shovel, a big, huge shovel. We've known each other for years. And I say, hi, John, I'm digging a hole in your backyard. And so I go to your backyard, I start digging the hole, and you're watching me dig the hole. And you begin developing beliefs about what I'm doing and you think through what you've always believed about me we've been good friends our children have played together you know that it's your birthday today you know that I know that you love roses so you say to yourself oh my gosh Steve dig in the hole to plant a rose bush for me Steve I love you so much you're such a sweet guy okay that's scenario number one Scenario number two, John, is that we absolutely hate each other. And finally, I show up with a shovel. I say, hi, John, I'm digging a hole in your backyard. And as you watch me dig the hole, your beliefs are completely different. Your beliefs are I'm digging the hole to bury you in. Now watch this. Same John. Same Steve, same Saturday morning, same shovel, same backyard, same hole, completely different.
beliefs, completely different feelings. How do you become your own best friend? By paying attention to what you are saying and believing about yourself. People say to me, Steve, I'm not really sure what I believe myself. And there's a wonderful handle on that. And do you know what the handle is? The handle is your self-talk. If you want to know what you believe about yourself, which is going to tell you where your feelings about yourself are coming from, listen to your self-talk. Listen to what you are saying to yourself about yourself. Now, this is really important because of our imperfections. I wish we were perfect. I wish the world was perfect. I wish we didn't have a pandemic. I wish I knew what was going to come. But none of that is true. And as the world goes through this amazing time, we also feel very vulnerable about ourselves. We don't feel as strong as we used to. And this isn't me the saying it. Studies are coming out all over the world in psychology saying people are looking at themselves differently. They are realizing that it doesn't matter how strong you have. If you get this virus, there's a chance. That's scary. That's something new. And it does not matter where in the world you live. It affects everybody. Our dear daughter lives in Ireland with her husband and two children. We keep in touch with them through the portal. The portal is simply a screen. They have one in their kitchen. We have one in our kitchen. And we sit down and we tell our grandchildren baby stories at night so they can go to sleep. They're across from the world in Ireland. What happened? What happened is we may not be able to see them for a while because of COVID. Things have really, really changed, and that has caused our feelings to also change. But remember this, Art and John. Our feelings, especially about ourselves, are coming from our beliefs about ourselves. More specifically, they're coming from what we're saying to ourselves about ourselves. So let's look at some examples. I hear people say to me so often, I'm really old. So I'm going to get sick later, let sooner. Or I'm out of work. And the pandemic has really affected me negatively. Do you know what Mary would say to me oftentimes? She would say, I'm bigger, so I'm not as attractive. We think that such things as the pandemic and being isolated and being older explains how we feel. No, 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 no. It's our beliefs about the pandemic. It's our beliefs about being isolated. It's our beliefs about being older that explains how we feel. Why is that so exciting? Because you know what? We can replace those beliefs. Now notice this, this is really important to understand. I did not say the word change. Why? because the brain hates change. The brain doesn't want you to change. When you start using the word change with the brain, it freaks out, it stiffens up, says, no, 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 no. Don't change, don't change, don't change. Because that's too scary. I don't want to change. But there's another characteristic of the brain that is wonderful. And that is the brain loves to create new things. It hates change, but it loves to create. So what we do is we create new beliefs about ourselves. So rather than the pandemic 
has ruined my life. The pandemic has enabled me to talk to you like this through Zoom and not have to travel down there. I used to make my money by traveling for hours and hours all over the Bay Area. Now I just sit here and talk to my people. No commutes. 12 months ago, I didn't know what Zoom was. Now I do. I get a chance to be alone with Mary. I didn't have that before. I get a chance to learn something new. So if you look behind me, you see a model of the Nautilus from Disney's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I am having an absolute blast making that thing. Without the commute and without the virus, I never would have done that. I'm also picked up my guitar, which you can see behind me, and I'm playing the guitar again. So new things have come from pandemic and from being isolated. What does Mary say to me now? She doesn't say I'm older. She says, honey, there's more to love. What happened? We said our feelings aren't coming willy-nilly from somewhere out there. They're coming, most of them, not all of them, most of them are coming from what we are saying to ourselves about Mary, about the pandemic, about being isolated, and those things can be replaced. And what's so wonderful about this is that becoming your own friend means that you are believing the positive stuff about yourself. That is a choice that you can make every minute as you go through the day. And the wonderful thing about the brain is the brain says, <coughs> okay, I believe you. Is it true? I don't even care, but my job, ready? Here we go. When you say it, my job is to find ways to make it true. Wow. I taught for many years real estate realtors. And I'll never forget when a realtor came to me and she said, Steve, I got to tell you a story. I wanted a certain house. And you know what I did? I made a model of that house right down to the bushes. And I was out selling houses and I found that house. And that's where I'm living now. It's amazing what the brain can do when you lock onto what you want. It's also amazing what the brain can do when you choose to say, I'm just not going to believe that about myself anymore. And the brain says, okay. So I told you the story of when I thought I was stupid in math for 42 years. I said, I'm just not gonna believe that anymore. And it just so happens that I'm brilliant math. It took me 42 years to figure that out. So th there's so many things that we've hidden, but we can unhide. And the brain says, okay. All of us are imperfect. We were born imperfect. We live in a broken world. And we're broken people. But the brain has been given two things to help us with that. Number one, it believes everything we tell it. So when we feel defeated, we go back and say, I'm changing my beliefs. I'm not defeated. I just did something differently. And I'm learning from this. And number two, it locks on to whatever you lock on to about yourself. You decide. Wow. Wow. That's exciting. So, Steve, we can become our own best friends by literally being a good friend. Yes. Being yes. supportive of ourselves. Yes. Being forgiving of ourselves. Yes. 
right? Things we do for other people, but we don't do for ourselves. That's right. That's right. We're and, we're. and that, quite frankly, if I have, if I'm my own best friend, that's pretty powerful stuff. It's much. Oh, it I think it's much more important than having a good friend on the outside it telling starts, you the same thing. That's right. It starts with being around. People, people who like themselves are a lot easier to be around. You notice that? People who like themselves are just neat to be around. People who don't like themselves, you can just tell. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good point. Yeah. I have to say that I enjoy, I enjoy my friendships, but quite frankly, uh, I know that I subscribe to being my own best friend, other than Harvey the Rabbit, who is always, <laughs> always supportive of me as well. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I've always sort of got that to fall back on. Yeah, that's the way it works. How are you going to how are you going to wrap this up for us? Well, let me wrap it up with the story. Um, I'm trying to think of a good story that would that would wrap this up in a perfect way. When I met Mary, I was instantly in love, but I knew that she wouldn't want me to really be around her because she was so beautiful. That's what I thought. That's what I believed. And therefore, it took me a long time to finally get up the guts to ask her out. When I did, she said yes. What happened? What happened was, I said, no matter what I believe, I'm locking on to maybe Mary will like to be around me. And she was, and we, we reached our 50th wedding anniversary this year. It was a decision that I had to make. The wonderful thing about the brain, the brain just believes everything you tell it. And when you lock on to what you want, the brain says, okay, and my job is to make it true. That especially applies to what you say about yourself. So for the first 42 years of my life, I just did not like myself. Now we have such a good time together, my brain and I, especially when I make mistakes. We just laugh. We laugh a lot because that's what I decided to do. So it really does work. It really does work. We're going to have to name this episode the Laughing Brain episode. Yeah, the Laughing Brain. <laughs> well, Steve, this has been another fabulous uh, session with the Brain Whisperer. Um, really good insights to how our brain works and how we can how we can make ourselves and our lives better, happier. Yeah. People yeah. said, why didn't you write your book four years ago? It took me 73 years to really learn this stuff. And I'm still <laughs> learning. It took me 73 years to make all the mistakes. And I'm still making them. But, you know, yeah, it's, it's, good, it's a good thing that you had a, a fellow traveler, a good friend, uh, beyond, beyond Mary, uh, to uh, help you do this. And it was yourself. Eventually, yeah, myself. you helped yourself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let me tell you another story. You wanted a story that, okay, I remember the story that wrapped this whole thing up that really fits perfectly. So let me, it takes about two minutes, but it's a wonderful story. I wanted to be a physician. And so I went to San Diego State studying to be a physician. When I was a junior in college, I was in an accident. And a young man ran into my VW bug with his old 88. And Dwayne, my dear friend, who I was driving home, was killed instantly. And both my legs were broken. My face was completely smashed in by the, by the steering wheel. And the nice thing about this is I don't remember anything. I was unconscious for three weeks. As I gradually awoken, I noticed that I was in traction, both legs broken, arm broken, face broken, jaw were wired shut, the whole thing. After traction of about 12 weeks, they came to me and they said, now we need to put you into a spike of body cast. Why? Because we have to mobilize your knee and your hip in the left femur. And I said, what's the spike of body cast? It starts at your toes and goes up to your chest. How long will I be in it? Probably another four months. And the orderlies came in, picked me up, put me on the gurney, took me down the cast room, put me in this spike of body cast, laid me back on the bed, and there I was staring at the ceiling. That's all you can do because your whole body is cocooned. And I said to myself, 
I cannot do this. I cannot lie here for another four months. I cannot do that. What was that? It was a belief. It was my self-talk. And what did my brain say? You're right. You can't. And I cried till the wee hours of the morning. Finally, as I was laying there, I realized, wait a minute. I'm not helpless. There is something I can do. I can change my beliefs. I can't bring Dwayne back. I can't make my legs heal faster. I can't bring my face back the way it was, but I can change my beliefs. So what am I going to believe? I'm going to believe, hmm, that eventually I'm going to get back to school and something wonderful is going to happen. What? I have no idea. How do you know? I don't know. None of that. But that's what I'm locking on to. That's what I'm believing. And a year later, I was back at school. I was on crutches, but I was still back at school. Graduated. And then you know what? I became a professional singer. And I traveled all over America. And it was on that tour that I met my wife. Is one year in a hospital worth 50 years with Mary? Surprised you even have to ask. Here's the point. As I lay in that bed, when I said to myself, I cannot do this, I'm helpless, my brain said, yep, you really are, and you can't. And then when I switched it, as you did, Art, with your smoking, I said, no, I'm not only not helpless, wonderful things are going to come out of this. How do you know? I don't know. But that's what I'm locking onto. And what did my brain say? Okay. And I fell asleep as if someone had done an ethereal anesthetic for me. And I slept for the next 12 hours. And God bless Kaiser, they didn't even wake me up. They let me sleep. Wow. This stuff really works. So you, Even when you're feeling helpless. You changed your self-talk to that of a friend. You yes. became your own best friend. Yes. And did for yourself what a friend would have done, which That's is, hey, right. you can do it. You can do this. It looks bad. You can make it. Stick in there. Things are going to get better, right? You're alive. Yeah. Someday you're going to yeah. walk again. Yeah. And one thing you can really believe about yourself as your own best friend is that you're going to stick with you. That's right. For better or worse. So no you don't have to what. worry about them <laughs> relocating. That's right. That's right. And we have become such, and that accident happened back in 1969. So what is that? 70, 40 years ago. Or if, no, 50 years ago. 50. Yeah, 50 yeah. years ago. And um, if it hadn't been an accident, I wouldn't know Mary. So there you go. Steve, this is, as always, has been wonderful insight to uh, how our brain works and how we can improve ourselves. So thank you. We look forward to seeing you, you again so with more great thank advice. You. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.